Let's talk about the impact of COVID as well. Obviously, a major global event that's hit reset on a number of major challenges, but vulnerabilities still exist. What would you say are the critical concerns for economies in this part of the world and globally as we continue through the pandemic recovery? It's likely that this won't be the last outbreak of the pandemic. We haven't seen the end of it, and there could be future flare-ups, and there could be future pandemic diseases or epidemic diseases. Um, one of the interesting tools, uh, powerful tools, the, the, the Jamil Institute at Imperial College London uh, has developed, it's called Daedalus. And the Daedalus tool looks to provide this epi, echo, epidemiological economic modeling together to inform policymakers how best to manage those competing agendas. And I think for us, this is an important tool that will be relevant in the GCC, uh, in the wider Arab world, across the global south, in fact, across the entire world, as we become perhaps uh, living in a new normal where there will be future flare-ups of COVID-19 and of other diseases, and hopefully we can stave off some of the worst economic impacts of, um, of managing those diseases. And of course, there were many millions of people who were pushed into poverty as a result of the, of the pandemic. Um, and, and this will, I think, be a powerful tool for the future. And vaccine equity was and still is a major issue. What would you say regarding the current state of vaccine equity today? And also, what lessons do you think that the global community, and in particular governments, have learnt through the course of the pandemic about how we could be better prepared and better action future pandemics? The question of equity in the health space is an acute one. Um, when we look at the vaccine equity question, one of the uh, key questions is around vaccine production but also research of new vaccines. For example, uh, the importance of collaborations between the users or, or, or scientists working in the field of artificial intelligence um, in healthcare and the collaborators here in the GCC and beyond. Um, one of the early applications of AI during the pandemic was to test existing therapeutic drugs and see whether any of these could be applied against COVID-19. Um, but we know that artificial intelligence has equity challenges. A lot of the populations on which algorithms are tested, for example, in the US, tend to be majority, majority white or Asian, um, with uh, creating a bias against, for example, black communities in the US. So one of the projects that we're working, with, uh, working on with the Jamil Clinic, which is another center at MIT using AI in healthcare, to deploy new AI technologies into clinical settings in collaboration with hospitals, universities, and researchers who can refine and improve the uh, efficacy of these algorithms uh, to the benefit both of the local communities, but also to us all. So I think equity and health, for us at Community Jamil, a key solution is to strengthen research capacity in the region and across the global south. George, the UN has said that women and girls are disproportionately impacted by the effects of pandemics, poverty and climate change. Why do you think this is and what is Community Jamil doing to address some of these issues? I can give a couple of examples of, of how we're trying to tackle this, for example, in Egypt. Uh, the JPAL office in Cairo has a number of work streams in this space, but two come to mind. One is um, working with women and their access to labor markets. For example, looking particularly at the apps that are used to, uh, to hail microbusad, microbuses, the small buses that shuttle people around Cairo, improving the uh, safety levels, trying to uh, limit harassment, sexual harassment, and ultimately um, improving outcomes for women through to their access to the labor, to, to the labor market as a result of improving their access to transport. This is one. Another is uh, improving women's ability to use uh, free creches, free child daycare, which is a uh, Egyptian government program. And j is testing whether small incentives can actually increase the likelihood of women accessing and using those, uh, the, the daycare centers, and ultimately, therefore, being able, again, to improve their labor market participation. Because ultimately, if we can help women who want to work to work, that will help reduce poverty and improve outcomes for women and for families and for everybody.